Then I implemented the model using convolutional neural network. So initially I used a two-layered network. That means my model had one input layer, two convolutional layers and an output layer. So as I said previously, I used a 5x5 five five kernel for the first layer and 3x3 three three kernels for the second layer. This resulted in a much better performance as can be seen in the graph. Um, I achieved an accuracy of 90%. But we can see that there is some overfitting of the data as the test performance and the training performance are a bit separated. So the testing performance is about 90% accuracy but the training accuracy is approaching 100%. So that indicates that there is some kind of overfitting going on in our data. So I added another layer so now my CNN becomes three layered. I added another layer just to see if it results in some improvement in uh, prediction. Um, and indeed it did. So I was able to achieve 95% accuracy with an additional layer. Um, here you can see the confusion matrix. The performance is pretty good across all the digits. Um, there were some problems with uh, digits 2, 4, 6, and 7, but then it turns out that it was just false positive as these images are kind of similar in their pictorial representations. One thing to note in this model is that there is no apparent overfitting of the training data as the, as the graph for testing and training outputs are pretty much the same so both perform relatively similar on the data that has been given. So since there is no difference in the plateau of the graph we can say that the model is not overfitted to training data. Go through the code that I have written for this project. The first phase is just analyzing the data set. So I have used NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib for this project along with Keras and some other libraries for plotting confusion matrices. So first I just load the data into variables x and y and just see uh, how, the, they de how the data set looks. So, uh, as explained in the presentation, I am using grayscale images um, as it greatly reduces the number of dimensions that our model needs to process. So first I'll just view the view all the images in as a single entity. So this gives us an overview of all the different types of image representations in our data set. Um, what we learn after mapping the test data and the given target values um, is that the target values do not actually, the indexes for the target values do not correspond to the digits represented by the image. What that means is that if we put each digit in one column, so for example if we put uh, the image representing the digit 2 in a column, the index for that column is not necessarily true. So to simplify the calculation for this model, we will remap the target values so that the column indexes represent the digit uh, that an image is representing. So for example, if we have uh, an image that represents 0, the column index for that number should be zero. So this is what we do in basically this snippet of code. So we have reordered y in y underscore ordered variable. Um, after that we move on to the code for logistic regression. So this is the model that I have implemented. Um, as you can see I first flatten the 
x input as a, a logistic regression model only takes one dimensional data so we flatten the image matrices and then after that uh, I have used uh, a soft softmax activation function softmax is just a generalization of the sigmoid function um, then I just return the model and uh, fit so we have uh, um, yeah so here's the snippet where I actually define my training and testing data set so I've used a split of 75 15% 75% 75 of the data is for training and the rest 15% is for testing so KRS actually comes with a built-in function that helps us to pro, uh, do the split of the data set then after splitting the data set I train my model so I basically fit my linear regression model to the training data set um, once the model has been fitted I plot the performance of the model so I plot the accuracy of the model as it goes through uh, different epochs then over here I display the confusion matrix for the uh, linear logistical regression model um, as explained the performance of this model is not not great as compared to the convolutional neural network in the next section I have implemented a convolutional neural network which has two layers so the function for that so the method that Keras provides for convolutional neural networks is CON2D um, over here you can see that we define the two layers component by component so first we have an input layer after which we have a ReLU block which has a kernel of 5 by 5 size as explained in the presentation then we perform the max pooling on the output of the ReLU block after that there is a dropout which is the output layer of the layer 1 which is then fed into the layer 2 in which all the blocks repeat but this time with uh, this time with kernel size of 3 by 3 then I return the model we find out the summary of the model and we compile our neural network so I'm using the Adam algorithm as my optimizer uh, parameter for the neural network Adam is a highly efficient optimization algorithm for back, back propagation and my loss function would be of the type categorical cross entropy and uh, the metric that I want from the neural network is defined here um, as accuracy after that I fit my model again after that I fit my model again um, to the training uh, data set and I plot the accuracy versus epoch graph once again then I move on to the convolutional ne neural network with three layers so this is exactly the same as previous code snippet just that I have added an additional layer over here which again uses so the layer one again uses 5 by 5 kernel size then it moves on to 2 by 2 then again 2 by 2 so in conclusion we learn that gestures provide a powerful way to interact with technology and as we move towards a future with buttonless technologies um, this kind of interfaces will become more and more useful in this project we explored vision-based gesture recognition so we used convolution, convolutional neural network 
to analyze still static images and we were able to train the data and after training our model was able to predict with high level of accuracy the digits that the pictures represented however there are other so this was a vision based gesture recognition project but there are other ways in which gesture recognition can be done for example google recently unveiled a gesture recognition technology based on ultrasonic waves so how that technology works is it emits ultrasonic waves and uh, it reads the reflection from the hand surface so there is there, there's a detector that captures the reflected waves and based on the different reflection patterns it can determine the gesture that the user is performing um so much of the research has to be done in that direction as well for future work on this project i plan to extend my code to recognize gestures in live video feed so right now i do gesture recognition only on static images but i plan to expand this to include live image live video feed as well in conclusion thank you for the uh, thank you for listening to the presentation this project was um very fulfilling in the sense that i got to learn a lot about on uh, different pattern recognition model different classification algorithms used for classifying all sorts of data thank you